Welcome to Cosmo Safari. I'm your host, Dave Farina. Have you ever wondered how to find M45, the Pleiades open cluster? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing winter sky wonder in your telescope. M45, the Pleiades, is a very bright magnitude 1.5 open cluster located in the constellation of Taurus, the Bull. The Pleiades also goes by the name Subaru in Japanese. Next time you see a Subaru car or SUV, check out the logo on the front. It's an artistic rendering of the Pleiades or Subaru open cluster. The brightness of M42 makes it one of the most easily accessible open clusters, even from light polluted skies. In fact, at an angular distance of approximately two degrees, M45 is easily seen with the naked eye. However, dark sky sites provide significantly better views of the surrounding nebulosity due to the high contrast between the dark sky and the brightness of the object. To find M45, first you will need to have a basic understanding of the night sky. I suggest using tools such as the Sky Safari app on your cell phone or on a tablet. In today's video, I will be using Starry Night 8 Pro, a desktop software to help guide you through finding this object. Starry Night also provides their Live Sky feature that provides you with a link between your desktop software and your phone or tablet, which is running Sky Safari. This makes planning a breeze. I'll provide you with links in the description below for each of these software tools. Step one. Find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the Northeast US, we will start our observation by locating the constellation of Orion as it rises in the Southeastern sky just after midnight by mid-October and as early as 6 p.m. by the month of January. Orion is easily located as it is one of the sky's brightest constellations and is home to a number of deep sky objects. Step two, find the object using star hopping. Within Orion, three bright stars make up its belt. Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. Using a Telrad or red dot sight in your telescope or with a pair of binoculars, follow along the belt starting at the bottom star, Alnitak, and trace an imaginary long line along the belt towards and past the top star, Mintaka, towards the constellation of Taurus. On our way through Taurus, we will locate a bonus deep sky wonder. The Hyades is a very bright magnitude 0.90 open cluster on our way towards M45. The Hyades is extremely large at an angular size of 5.5 degrees, which is approximately the width of three fingers at arm's length. This large angular size is the result of the fact that it is one of the closest open clusters to the sun at only 153 light years away. The Hades is best viewed in a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars or in a very wide field eyepiece on a very short focal length telescope, such as a small refractor. If you don't have either of these, or if you just want to view it for a few seconds, I would consider simply using your magnified finder scope to get a closer look before moving on to M45. Continue past the Hades towards the next bright patch of stars in the sky. You've now located the seven sisters of the Pleiades. Step three, move your eye to your magnified finder. Once you've roughly centered the scope, I move my magnified finder scope. Even in light polluted skies, M45 should be visible in a 40 to 50 millimeter finder scope without any issues. Center M45 in your finder scope. Step four, move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations at your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen the very wide field Nagler 26 on my JMI 12.5 Newtonian telescope. Short focal length telescopes work best on this object due to its very large angular size. 
M45 is excellent through a short focal length, small refracting telescope, or a pair of binoculars. Long focal length telescopes, such as my Schmidt Cassegrain, are actually not very useful for this object, as this object is significantly bigger than my field of view. One of the common misconceptions of many people just getting into observational astronomy is that they think the most important part of a telescope is the ability to magnify an image, when in reality, magnification is simply one of these important factors. It's one of them. Other factors include light gathering power and resolving power, and those two are significantly more important. Light gathering power is the ability for a telescope to collect or to gather light. I liken this to leaving a drinking glass and a five gallon bucket out in a rainstorm. Which one of these would collect more water? Of course, the answer is the five gallon bucket because it has a bigger opening. Telescopes are similar in this way, except that they gather light or photons rather than rainwater. Pro tip, don't collect rainwater in your telescope. Resolving power is the ability to separate light sources. For example, two stars from each other in your telescope. The larger the telescope's opening or aperture, the better its resolving power. This is similar to the resolution values that we place on video, such as in TVs. The higher the resolution of a TV, as we go from standard definition to HD, and then HD to 4K and beyond, the more detail that we are able to see in our TV shows and movies. As a result of these two main powers of a telescope, astronomers oftentimes use very large aperture telescopes to increase the resolution of their observations. However, within the Earth's atmosphere, atmospheric conditions, known as seeing, are a major limiting factor. Only with very special instruments called adaptive optics can professional astronomers improve their observations by going to these very large telescopes but that will have to wait until a future video. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. And click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M45, want to provide any feedback on the video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any other questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, astrophotography, space flight, or space exploration, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much from Dave Farina here at Cosmos Safari. Clear skies.